you know, the criticism that the Broncos have been getting for drafting Bo Nix has been freaking ridiculous to me because he's easily going to be the best quarterback that this team has had since Peyton Manning. What really has me frustrated with how people are talking about Denver's selection of Bo Nix is that they're just completely ignoring that this dude went to the best head coach of any of the rookie quarterbacks out there. If you were to rank every rookie quarterback in order from who had the best chance to succeed to the worst chance to succeed, Bo Nix should at least be number two behind Caleb Williams. You want to know why? Because if there's anybody whose judgment I trust when it comes to evaluating and developing quarterbacks, it's Sean Payton. Y'all seem to forget that his final season in New Orleans, at one point he was 5-1 and one on top of the NFC South division with Jameis Winston as his quarterback. Jameis Winston, before he went down that season-ending injury against Tampa Bay, he had the best touchdown-interception ratio in the NFL at 14-2. He also outplayed Aaron Rodgers week one that same season. And even when Jameis Winston went down, you would have thought that the Saints season was over, but Sean Payton was still finding ways to win games with guys like Trevor Simeon and Taysom Hill at quarterback, and they nearly made the playoffs playing Russian roulette at the QB position. Hell, when Teddy Bridgewater was coming off that gruesome leg injury from Minnesota, most of us didn't even know if that dude was going to be able to play football again. He goes to New Orleans, balls out in a few games in replace of Drew Brees due to injuries. And then he ultimately ends up getting paid by the Carolina Panthers thanks to Sean Payton's tutelage. I, I'm just really confused why people are ignoring the situation in the coach that Bo Nix went to. And you see, the reason why people are giving Sean Payton such a hard time is because there are a lot of hurt feelings with how he handled the Russell Wilson situation. Newsflash, people, is life. When you don't perform, you don't live up to expectations, you end up getting the pink slip. You get kicked to the curb. There's no way you can justify Denver keeping Sean Payton or Denver keeping Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson played better under Sean Payton than what he did under Nathaniel Hackett, and it wasn't even close. You see, Sean Payton is a realist, and a lot of people hate the truth because you know what they say about the truth? The truth hurts. And Russell Wilson, to be quite frankly with you, just isn't a good quarterback anymore. You get a guy in Bo Nix who's going to be a way better fit in Sean Payton's offense as compared to a guy like Russell Wilson. What does Bo Nix does well that Sean Payton loves? He plays within structure. He gets the ball out fast. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes with the football. He's not bailing out of clean pockets. He can actually run his offense with Bo Nix at quarterback. He couldn't run his offense with Russell Wilson. He had to run the Russell Wilson offense. And the Russell Wilson offense in today's NFL, 2023, doesn't work anymore because Russell Wilson is washed. People are talking about let Russ cook. No, Russ can't cook anymore, man. You give Russell Wilson the ingredients, he's still going to burn the food up. So I, I'm, I'm just so sick and tired of these people with these damn sob stories when it comes to Russell Wilson and his time in Denver. You guys make it seem like this dude was mistreated. He was one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the National Football League. If I'm paying you 40 to 50 million a year, I expect you to look like an elite quarterback. You shouldn't need all these things to play up the expectations. The better you are, the higher you get paid, the more you're expected to do with less around you. Patrick Mahomes just won the freaking Super Bowl with guys that we didn't even know who their names are outside of Travis Kelsey. Bo Nix going to Sean Payton was the best possible situation he could land in. He's a good fit in his offense. Because he's going to get the ball out fast. He's not going to be making stupid decisions with the football. I love this pick. I, I, I don't get why so many people were against it when I saw this pick coming a mile away. Hell, I didn't even know if Bo Nix was even going to be on the board when it was Denver's time to pick unless they traded up for him. Denver needed a quarterback. They got them a quarterback. And now we're, we're, we're trying to criticize who they selected? Like, how can you possibly give the Broncos a C or a D grade for drafting Bo Nix when there was nobody else better on the board? And guess what? What's so ironic about it is that if Denver would have passed on Bo Nix and took best player available like Brock Bowers, guess who would have took him right after? The Las Vegas Raiders, and everybody would have been singing the Raiders' praises. Everybody would have been giving the Raiders a B or A-minus grade. But since so many people are bitter 
with how Sean Payton treated Russell Wilson, you know, people just have a hard time remembering that, hey, Sean Payton is one of the best offensive minds in the history of the NFL. Like, you got people sitting on their couch talking about the draft from the basement, acting like they know more than Sean Payton. You don't know more than Sean Payton, dude. I know everybody has a right to their own opinion. Hell, I'm on here giving my opinion on the situation right now. But if there's anybody whose judgment I'm not going to question when it comes to the quarterback position, it's Sean Payton. He has a right to that privilege. You want to know why? Because this dude was able to have Jameis Winston playing turnover-free football. He was able to do something that no other head coach in the league has been able to do. And if Jameis Winston never got injured that season, the Saints most definitely would have made it to the playoffs and they possibly could have won that division. So if this dude can turn Jameis Winston into a high-level, efficient, turnover-free quarterback, you mean to tell me you don't believe Sean Payton can turn Bo Nix into a superstar? I have a hard time believing that. The track record speaks for itself. And then for all you fools that keep saying... Man, Sean Payton was only good because he had Drew Brees. Newsflash, you do remember that Drew Brees was kicked to the curb by the Los Angeles Chargers or the San Diego Chargers at the time, right? He goes to Sean Payton coming off that shoulder sur surgery where many doctors, you know, said that it probably wasn't smart for you to sign this dude. He isn't going to have that long of a playing career because of this shoulder surgery. Well, he ends up becoming an all-time great under Sean Payton's tutelage. We give too much praise to the players and not enough praise to the coaches when the coaches have a large influence on determining the success of these players. You want to know why? Because these coaches have the responsibility of putting these quarterbacks in the position to succeed. And Sean Payton couldn't run the kind of offense that he wanted to run because of Russell Wilson. It's a difference if you had to tailor your offense towards the Russell Wilson that we saw in Seattle. But the Russell Wilson that we saw in Denver is Cook. And you guys, to me, upgraded that quarterback. Hell, I would much rather have Bo Nix at quarterback than Russell Wilson right now. And I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and that's why I say that. Like, you guys don't know how frustrated I am to see Russell Wilson penciled in as QB1 on the damn death chart, bro. Because this dude is not good. I promise you guys that you guys are going to get way better quarterback play out of Bo Nix this season than what you've gotten out of Russell Wilson the past two years. Stop saying, let Russ cook. Russ can't cook anymore, man. I, I, I personally think that Russell Wilson should, should retire and just become a family man. Honestly, the dude is not good. I don't get why people keep propping this dude up. When the one of the best offensive minds in the history of the league is willing to take the NFL's largest dead cap to get rid of you, doesn't that not indicate a red flag? The only reason Pittsburgh signed this dude is because they're paying him the veteran minimum. If Russell Wilson was as good as what many of you people still think he is, he wouldn't be playing for only $1 million this year. Like you Denver Broncos fans got blessed with Bo Nix at QV because this was the perfect quarterback for the kind of system that Sean Payton wants to run. What did Bo Nix do well at Oregon? He got the ball out fast. He played well within structure. He took what the defense gave him. He didn't have a lot of turnovers. Those are four things that Sean Payton wants out of his quarterback. Who cares if this dude is a check down merchant? Same thing with Drew Brees. He was a check down merchant. So now we're, we're, we're harping against quarterbacks for taking what the defense gives them. It's not like he was J.J. McCarthy, check down merchant. Like, J.J. McCarthy was a taxi driver. He didn't do anything, pretty much. You could have put Jalen Milrow, Shadur Sanders, or whoever else behind that Michigan team, and they could have produced similar or better results than what J.J. McCarthy did. If Denver would have drafted J.J. McCarthy, then I would have had a lot more concerns about that selection than them taking Bo Nix. Like, people get so attached to the player, and they just overlook the coaching, the scheme. It's way more that goes into determining how successful these guys become at the next level than just, oh, well, do they have skills that translate to the next level? Like, you got to be able to put these guys in the right system to maximize their talent. And that's just something that I don't hear these people on ESPN or FS1 talking about. They just say, ew, they drafted Bo Nix in the first round. That dude isn't worth a first round pick. Like, who are you to criticize Sean Payton?
I know that we come on here and we give our opinions about these coaches, but there's certain coaches that when they make a decision, I keep my mouth closed and I respect it just based on their track record. You know, when Andy Reid traded up to get Patrick Mahomes, Sean Payton was hurt. You want to know why? Because he wanted Patrick Mahomes. So in terms of guys who are really good at developing quarterbacks and getting the most out of the QB position, it doesn't get any better than Sean Payton. Get over the fact that it didn't work out, Russell Wilson, the dude is cooked. So you're telling me you wanted to run it back for a third straight season with mediocrity at quarterback? You were overpaying this dude. No wonder Sean Payne was always cussing this dude out on the sideline. And you got people in the national media saying, oh, y'all got a lot of respect for Russ with how he handled that situation. Because if I was in his shoes, I would have snapped on Sean Payne. Yeah, you would have snapped on Sean Payne and you would have been put right on that damn bench. Sean Payton is one of the greatest offensive minds in the history of this game. I think he has the right to get the benefit of a doubt when it comes to who he drives in the first round. Like, how can you give the Broncos a C-plus grade for addressing a need? Are, are, are you kidding me? This is why draft grades are so useless to me. This is why I didn't even finish my draft grades, because they're pointless. Most of these teams suck at drafting. You know what's considered a good draft when you can at least – find three or four starting caliber players. That's a good draft. Most, most of these draft picks don't work out. The Broncos have missed on every single quarterback that they've drafted in the last couple of years before Sean Payton arrived. I, I think that Sean Payton should be given a little bit more of a benefit of a doubt than what people are giving him. Just trying to say, man, they really drafted a check down merchant? Well, duh, because that's what Sean Payne wants out of his quarterback because that's what his system relies upon. I'm really like, can, can somebody who isn't on board with the Bo Nick selection make this make sense to me? Why people are so against this move? If there's anybody who can maximize the talent and skill set of Bo Nix, it's Sean Payton. Had Jameis Winston balling, Teddy Bridgewater balling, Teddy Bridgewater got paid because of Sean Payton, by the way. I'm pretty confident Bo Nix is going to have a really great career under Sean Payton playing for the Denver Broncos.